All right, hello and welcome to another live stream of Proteus Development. Um, this is just a little site that talks about what the Proteus language is if you're new to this stream. Um, essentially, I'm just working on a new language that is influenced by Swift, but still allows you to do a lot of the lower level stuff that C-based languages allow you to do. Um, well, C languages, um, not necessarily C-based, but okay. Uh, I'm trying out some new mic today. That way, hopefully, uh, keyboard sounds are a little bit less. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's see, make sure we're in the right spot. All right, so let's just see where we left off last time. Okay, so last time what we did is we have the basic um, AST, which really we don't really have an AST right now. We have a collection of AST statements, um, but we don't actually have a tree yet. Um, but we have something started there to get that working. Uh, and then we're actually going ahead, and, uh, we're taking that output and turning it into C code. And then we're writing that file out. Um, but we don't have any of the compiler pieces hooked up yet. So what I really want is, I think we're going to go ahead and um, make this full process working so that I don't have to type the clang stuff in right here. So, so right now we're outputting this file. Oops. And that's just this, this code right here. Um, and then I have to manually come in here and do clang, basic, right? And then I can do basic, and then that prints it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and finish out that piece of it. Um, and then depending on how much time left, how we have left for today, we can go and actually start making our AST a bit better. So let's go ahead and just remove all the basic stuff. All right. So let's get our files going here. We got our main file there. What's going on? I was doing shift. Um, okay, so this is our uh, all of our parser. So right down here is where we have our convert ASD. So we just look at what our our proxy main program is actually doing here. Just loading up. Um, just grabs that first item that you pass in. No air handling right now. Um, no pretty output. Just just want to get things working. Um, so I mentioned last time we want to fix this parser up a little bit so that's not quite so coupled to which lexer we're using. And yeah, so it's just going through all the statements that we get uh, and then passing that into the converts. So what we're going to do right here is this is where we're gonna get a little bit more fancy. So what I think I'm gonna to wanna to do is I think I want to just output this to like a temp folder. Hmm. Well, let's just do this, the first thing here which is going to be, well, we're actually already outputting the file. Yeah. So we're actually gonna come into here and we're gonna do all of our work inside this folder. So we're gonna do proxy test basic, right? So we're gonna get the output in here and not mess up our, our root directory. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so first thing we're going to do here, actually, yeah, the next thing we just want to do is we're just going to call ns task on this thing. Um, and compile it. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to create a new task. 
All right, now, oops, there's a bunch of stuff you gotta set for in his task. All right, so there's the arguments we want to pass in. There's the launch path. So that's the tool that we're going to specify. So where is Clang? Okay. Right, so let launch path is going to go user and Clang. Let what's it, arguments, and this is just an array of items. So we need our file. Okay, so up here, what we want to do is let output path. Basic.c. And we're going to go ahead and um, write to that. Okay. All right, so and then we're going to pass in two other things. Um, and right now we're just going to call it, um, I don't know, let's call it temp. Okay, so we could capture the standard in, standard out. I don't think we really need to do that right now. I think that's actually all we need to do. Okay. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing let here. Okay. We're going to launch task dot wait for wait until exit. Right, and then termination status. Yep. And so all we want to do is do this. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay, so now if we do prot C with that input file, it's going to output that, and we got a temp, and then we can go run temp. All right, so now we have written our first compiler, really. Um, we've parsed an input file, we've converted it to something that uh, an intermediate representation that we can then turn into machine code and produce an executable. So great. Now we should probably actually start making our stuff work better. Um, right, so like we're going to input errors. Uh, we need to do a bunch of error handling, state handling. We need to actually make our Parsing much better. So there's a lot of places we can actually go start. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to decouple the parser from the lexer. So we're going to come up here. Right, the instead of taking a file name, we're going to tell you to give me a lexer. Right, so we're going to do that. 
Um, so okay. Okay, so then right up here, um, hmm. okay, so we've got the content, contents of file, self file name is no longer it. Right, the contents of file name. And so this is the file that we're going to actually load. So that's path, actually. Um, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to change that scanner. Yeah. And then it's just Lexer, Lexer. Oops. All right, that compiles. Let's just make sure that works. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this. And then to make sure everything's working, we're going to remove basic.c and temp. Then we're going to call our compiler, then we're going to run the temp. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um. All right, let's just do this. Um, yeah, there we go. And then right here, we're actually going to do this. Boom. Okay. That way we can have a nice little separation between uh, any output from our program along the way with the actual output of the executable that we generate. Okay. So if I'm going to be doing that a lot, I might want to just make a little script of that. Oh, hmm. That's fine. Okay. All right, so we fixed that. The parser is no longer tied directly to that particular implementation of Lexer. Perfect. All right, so let's go look and see what else we got. Okay. So I think what we wanted to go ahead and start doing now is making our Lexer actually do some more interesting stuff. And so if we go look, right, just at what our um, file even looks like, it's just import standard lib. So maybe we want to hmm, try to think if we want to get rid of the hacks first. Yeah, let's just go through and get rid of our hacks. So if we go back and look through our Elixir um, and our C rewriter right here, um, we can see a lot of the hacks that we needed to have. So we can't get rid of this one yet. The standard lib one, that's that's going to be there for a little while. Um, this though, the wrapping it around in this main body, uh, because our functions, we're going to allow this script-like writing of a file. Um, 
So I'm just trying to figure out how we want to do that. So the way Swift does it is it just require the file to be called main.swift. Um, or you can run it through the interpreter and then it just co considers that as a script file. Um, So I think the way I'm going to get rid of this hack is by, hmm. so I can either just assume that a file is going to be in that scope for now. Yeah, so let's just do that. Let's just assume because right now we're just going to be dealing with one file. When we go through and create our um, our set of tokens, mm, our set of statements, so what we might want to do is take all of our import statements and group them. And then put those at the top. And then use the rest of the items that are left inside of our set of AST items that are returned. And for now, just encapsulate all of those within a body. Right? And so we're going to need another, another AST, right? We're going to need, like this really isn't a statement. Well, I mean, this is a statement. This is a function invocation. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this is actually a function declaration with a implementation. Yeah. Yeah, and so for in Proteus, um, let's just do that. Um, well, if we look at basic, right, what Proteus does for its, it's going to look like this. This is what it's going to look like. This is what the what our compiler is going to assume. Actually, we're going to infer that this is what it is. And so let's go ahead and, and write that out. So how do we want to do that? So we're going to go import a function declaration. It's going to have the keyword function. All right, so we're going to have another enum. For now, okay. All right. So there's going to be the name, which is going to be a token. It's going to have the arguments, which is going to be an array of key values, right? So the first one's going to be an identifier, token, and the other one's going to be a type. Hmm. So it's going to be some sort of token. Type this is all going to be another token. All right. Ah, and then our body. Right. 
the body of it is going to be an array of statements. All right, so this is where we're starting to get into kind of defining what our grammar of our language is going to look like. What I'm saying is that if all functions have a name, they have a set of arguments, they have a return type, then they're going to have a body. And that body is only able to be made up of statements right now. So an import really isn't a valid statement that we want. So we're going to have to probably start pulling these things out here. Uh, I don't really like how these are. I'm not sure these endings are going to work well. Um, we're definitely going to need, yeah. All right, well, we're going to do this for now. Um, so, right, so if we got an import statement, Hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how we want to do this. Because this stuff is going to change significantly. Right? Because this isn't really going to be function invocation statement. This is going to be... What we're probably going to end up do, doing is reading the first token, and then based on what that token is, go try to parse it. As long as we're in a context in which that token is valid. All right, I'm just trying to think, do I need to do that now, or do, should I do that later? I think we're going to do that later. All right, so how do I wrap this then in a less hacky way? So, I mean, what I could do is, I mean, I could do two passes over this. I could walk through here, get all the imports. Okay. Or, let's just take the parse, get our collection of statements. All right, so we're going to get that in here. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is this. Okay, here we go. So for import, uh, um, This is one reason why I kind of like this. Yeah. The Unreal Coding Guidelines always have capitals, and I kind of like it because it gets rid of this keyword problem, but whatever. All right, import statement in ast.filter, and we're going to return actually, we're gonna that zero dot. Mm -hmm. Um, so if the filter, so it's a statement, statement coming through, what do the statements look like again? Okay, yes. Probably cannot just do this. Well. I can just do if case, right? If case import turn true.
anonymous closure argument not contained in the closure for he looks like you're contained in a closure to me filter is a closure all right that seems like a bug so as with all bugs, oops, I go and uh, package up the zip file so that we can potentially log a bug. Proteus, compress. That does not look right to me. Um, Zero, not closure. Okay, so now we go work around it. All right, so if case is that, so I mean, let's just make sure that I actually have everything, right? Uh, hmm. All right. Let's do let imports. Does that work? All right, return type up here is wrong. Okay. Yeah, that seems fine. So I wonder if it was, oh, you know what? Okay. For import. Right. So for filtering, it's probably just freaking out because I hadn't finished the uh, right. It's it's assuming that those brackets actually went to the for statement, and not the closure. Is my guess. All right, yeah, so that's what it's doing. Okay, so I'll just do it up here. Hmm. Let's see, we're going all the way to that one. Okay. All right, so for all of those, we're gonna do this. All right, so if value, hmm. Okay. Statement doesn't have one. Right. So if uh, oops. import, we don't need the Actually, why do I put import as that part of the token? There's the import statement. There it is. Keyword. Yeah, I don't really need the keyword. Like, I already know it's an import. Import. Let's call it package. All right. 
So parse input. Okay. Package is going to be the identifier token. Okay. All right, so now we're going to come down here. All right, package name, package. We'll just do package. All right, so package. All right, so if that's true. All right, so if that's true, standard lib includes standard IO. Yeah, like we said before, standard lib is actually going to end up being a bunch of different uh, includes here just for now. So actually, let's do this. Okay, we have standard lib there. All right, so if case import statement, which we already know it's going to be that, but that's okay. Um, if port, we just need to do that to get the package out. That's the package, string value, standard lib. Okay. Great. So now we essentially want the um, opposite of this. So actually we're going to go ahead and inline this function is import. And the question is, is the statement an import statement? All right? So if case.import statement return true. So it would be kind of nice if the ifs were actually expressionable there, but they're not, so that's okay. So let's see, delete all this. All right, and so we're going to return is, uh, is yeah. What? Oh. Oops. Unresolved identifier package. Hmm. Okay, so now we're down here. Okay. All right, so we've done all those. We're going to move this hack up here. So it's not quite a super hack anymore, but we still want to fix this. Need a mechanism to actually dictate we have the main function, right? Instead, we're just going to assume it. Mm. Right, 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 right. Okay. So for statement in AST, So now that we actually have that function, I don't know if this is an auto closure or not.
tools. Um, excellent. So actually, I think I want to go ahead and do the same thing up here. AST filter is import. Okay. And so now we're just going to do the same thing. If get rid of the switch. If case let function identifier params. Right? If it's print, we're going to map it to that. Oops. Ah. All right, I'm going to fix this one little thing in here. It's bugging me. Okay. Yeah, I think. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Might help. Mm -hmm. All right. Goodness gracious. There we go. Let's see if we have, still have a working item here. All right. Cool. We have an error. Okay. What's going on? Line 56, huh? Um, I don't remember the go-to line. All right. Where is it actually? What? No, it can't be line 56. All right, because line 56 doesn't exist, really. All right, so we've gone through invalid syntax, invalid function vocation. Oh, let's go check our thing down here. Are we throwing? Oh, right. Haha. <laughs> we have no idea how to parse that file yet. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah, so the problem was I actually updated that. Uh, our test file to have uh, stuff that we have now, absolutely no idea how to successfully parse, so that's what those, those errors were telling us. All right, so our little refactoring here works great. Uh, we have standard lib now, we have that, we have the int main, uh, and a little bit less hacky. Then we have our printf. Um, I don't know why we have a new line on this. <sighs> Definitely don't want the new line. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that's not too bad. Um, what else do we want going here? All right, so this is starting to shape up a little bit better. I think the next stage is to really go back into our Lexer code. Well, yeah. Hmm. We need to go back into both our, our Lexer and our tokenizer, because our tokenizer, right, it's missing a bunch of tokens. It doesn't have uh, the ability to do assignments um, or anything like that. And so what I actually want to do is I want to go back into our main file. And I want to start outputting that data back again. Hmm. 
So I can either, no, I'd rather be able to, so what I want to do is I want to, I want to do the same thing here. I want for each stage to actually go print out what's going on. That way I can get a nice, easy, quick uh, visual debug. Um, without tying it into the actual code itself. Right, because if I put it in the code, what's going to happen is it's going to actually, uh, since the scanner and the lexer both work iteratively, it'll only show up that pieces, those pieces of information in the beginning. Um, or not in the beginning, but as everything will be interleaved. So we'll get some scanner information, we'll get some token information, or lexer information, and, and I just don't want to do it that way. Uh, but the downside is the scanner, right, it's one way. And so what we're going to need is we're going to need like a reset. And maybe we just have a print, hmm. a debug print. Yeah, let's change this to debug print. Oops. All right, so we're just going to call scanner.debugprint, and what it's going to do is, based on your content and your index, um, it's just going to go through, get them all, and output them all. Yep, okay. While that um, info equals self.next, Output it. All right. So now the thing is, we need to go reset all of our state now. Um, and so we need to set the self dot index equals to the content start index. Um, we're going to want to set self dot current back to nil. Okay, those are the only two that should change. Um, now, self.line. Yeah, there's a lot of state going on here. Right, should stall. I mean, that should never get called, but let's just make sure everything is back to default. And so the other way we're going to do this is, yeah. So I kind of like to preface my private items with um, an underscore, even if they're private. And the reason is private doesn't actually mean private to a class in Swift it means private to a file. I like to write my code. As you can see, I don't have a single file for every single class or type that I have. Like I don't have a, like I just, it's stupid to have, in my opinion, to have like this token be in its own class because then I'm going to have to, like you see me going back and forth and editing these things. And so that means I want to be switching buffers all the time and switching to go to different files. And I just find that workflow really cumbersome. Um, and so instead, I like to have files based on concept. So all the parsing stuff is going to go in this parser file. Um, I think it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so anyways, this is long one to say this private function is actually available to everybody in here. Um, it's not part of the API. But I don't want to accidentally use it in like this class lexer, because there might be a it might come down to all right, we're gonna go write this lexer file and or this lexer class, and it turns out, yeah, it's gonna be like two thousand lines of code. Okay, at that point I might actually want to go ahead and put it into its own file because then this comps this parser file is just gonna to get too wieldy to actually use. Okay. And so um Mm, yeah, so that's that's kind of one reason I don't even want to use private. 
I could use internal, but I just, I just don't care. All I want to do is preface this with underscore. Say so don't use it unless you really know what you're doing. It's not part of the public API, but whatever. Like I don't want to deal with what file is it in. Oh, do you have access to that type? And like, oh no, if I need to inherit this thing, can you see it? I just, I just don't care. Right. So just function defaults. It's going to go through and do all these things. Okay. Um, it's going to do that. Right, it's actually just going to go ahead and do all of this stuff down here that I just did. I'm going to call self.defaults here. Oops. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, Uh, I wonder if Swift might not let me do this. Ah, uh, that would suck. Oh, I lost all of my file. Oh, my change is awesome. All right, self.line. So I think Swift's actually going to complain to me that I'm not going to be able to make this call to this function because I haven't initialized line and column yet now that I took away their default values. frustrating right so yes this is dumb all right what oh index right uh, so dot index equals content dot start index. Yeah, see, this is so stupid. This is one of the things I really hate about languages that assume. Like, I just don't like this initialization construct because basically it's coupled in the initialization and the allocation of the object all into one thing. So now I have this little guy that I can't actually call. So I don't think I can call a knit again from here, because then it'll end up saying, oh, you must want a new type, because the only way to call a knit is to call it with this, the constructor syntax. And I don't want to construct it. I want to set values. I want to do initialization. I don't want to do allocation. Um, so I don't really like that those are tied together, but whatever. Uh, that's the workaround. We have to default everything, so we have to do the code twice anyways. So I guess it might as well have kept it down there as a duplicated code, but oh well. All right, now in case we ever needed to get do it again, it's fine. Okay, so then we're gonna come over here, that debug print. What did I do? I've got a bunch of crap code over here. Delete to the end. Oh, somehow I've opened it up in both buffers. Okay, um, oh great, what did I do? What is this? Oops. Okay, that was weird. All right, so there we go, perfect. So I got all my scanner info, right? Um, yeah, we probably don't want the scanner. <laughs> That's right. I did all that work. Uh, we'll want this here just so we can turn it on and off. Um, but 
because we're probably going to want to debug it a little bit and this will help. But for now, that's going to go away. Uh, we want to do the same thing with the Lexer though. Right? Lexer dot um, debug print. So let's come over here to the Lexer and create the same thing. Hmm. So what we're going to do is while token um, now let token equals self dot next print out the token. Okay. So this is going to be interesting, right? We got to call we have to call scanner dot defaults, and we want to call self dot defaults. So we're using the private API of an internal class here, but we know that we're going to do that, and that's. Okay. All right, and the only state we really need to care about here is the token. So I'm not going to call defaults. I'm just going to set the token. No. Okay, so now if we come over here and run this. All right, perfect. So now we're going to get all of our token information, right? We got our keyword import zero zero identifier standard live terminal. Great, end of file. Okay, so our debug prints need to get a little bit more information in them, or a little bit more usability in them. Okay, tokens. Um. Yeah, no. Really? I can't. That's awesome. Good thing I got rid of print line. Do, do, do. Okay. That is going to fix that one. Uh, we also want to go fix the other debug print to get some more data in there for us. Uh, this is going to be scanner info. There's just a lot of crap in that one. Print. Did I just want a new line here? I forget. Yeah, okay. What happened? Oh boy, undo. All right, so we have our tokens, great. All right, so, all right, uh, our parser. Hmm. Parser.parse. All right. So in this case, um, what we want is actually let me go get rid of these. All right. Um, no, yes, this is. I guess I could just put a new line on that one, but that's good. Okay. Oh, what? That was dumb. What's going on? Oh, 
Okay, great. We have our tokens, we have our AST section. Um, let's change the C code to match the rest of it now. C code. Excellent. Okay. So we have our token debug output fixed, we have our AST output fixed, we have our code output fixed, and we have the ability to go ahead and do that. So, okay, with that we're going to go ahead and wrap up this stream. Um, I think we've gotten ourselves into a much better place. We can see our what our, what our code is actually doing uh, now. We've broken some of the dependencies that we kind of did in a stupid way. Um, and then we've started to factor out how the actual AST construction is going to work and moved our main function hack into uh, a little bit better place. So uh, until next time.